Okay, so I'd like to reinforce some of these concepts that we were using with moving charges. So um, you'll remember that if we have a charge here, Q, right? And we have, uh, and if we had two charges, uh, let's say, let's keep everybody the same at uh, charge Q. Two charges um, at two different, at the same distance separating both, right? Then this guy here, if he's moving perpendicular um, to this, to the direction between these two charges, will will create a higher field for this for this fellow than um, this second one here, right? Which is moving directly at this charge. So we're going to look at that a little bit here. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the distance s here um, between. Uh, where this charge feels no force if these two charges at the ends are separated by a distance d. Um, so this particular situation that I've drawn with, without that, where, where I said this guy's halfway in between these two, um, that's not stable, right? I said that he feels more force from this guy than from this guy, right? Not a stable situation. So what we want to do is we want to see um, what, where that stable point is. Now that's something we always do in physics, and there are a couple of reasons for that. One of them is it, it will, it's something that always um, brings us back to things we know, right? It always brings us back to Newton's laws, and we are all experts on Newton's laws by the time we're in physics 3010. So, um, let's see, what do I have? I have three identical charges. So identical, ident identical, Lee charged particles. So they all have charge Q, right? Um, Two are moving. And that they have the speed V. One towards and and one perpendicular to the stationary particle. Okay. Um, we've got this speed v. Uh, what else do we need? We need. Uh, we're saying that the uh, moving particles are a distance d apart. Um, and, and we'll just write distance here. That that's fine. Distance d. So that's that's what we have. Um, now, what, what do we want to find? We want to find the point where this guy here is stable. So the stable point, we want to find the stable point for the third charge. Okay, and that's some point S. Okay. And our concept like I said, is moving charges. So we're just going to use this moving charges um, concept and get, it, oh, get, it, get along with it. The equation here is the field from a, a moving charge is Q over 4 pi epsilon naught times um, 1 minus V squared over C squared over 1 minus um, v squared over c squared times sine squared theta, which is the angle between this, between the um, distance and the speed, um, to the three halves. And then we have our normal sort of radial character to the electric field. So, again, see you see how this this term here modifies Coulomb's law. Okay, so that's something we talked about in class, or we'll talk about in class, uh, because I'm actually doing this before class. So, 
we've got all that. Um, how are we going to go about solving it? So what's our strategy? Well, since we've already got this thing here, right? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to find the place where the force is zero, right? But we remember that um, F equals QE, so we don't really have to figure out where the force is zero, we just have to figure out E is zero, where the total electric field on this particle right here is, where that's, where that's zero. So um, that's all we're going to do is I'm going to superimpose the fields from this on this and there, get the condition, and go, right? So uh, first we want to find the electric fields, okay? And once we find the electric fields, um, then two will uh, balance them. So the total of the fields has to be equal to zero. And um, three will solve. And this is going to be um, one of these things that the math is substan a substantial part, right? So uh, all the physics, all, all the hard, hard stuff is um, just doing this. And then we spend a lot of time, um, a lot of time with the math. So uh, let's just figure out our two things. So if we call this zero, this one one, and this one two, right? Um, the electric field on zero from one is equal to the charge of one, which is Q over four pi epsilon naught times uh, this thing. Now one is going perpendicular, so this is a 90 degree angle, the sine of 90 is one, so we have one minus V squared over C squared divided by one minus V squared over C squared to the three halves, so that's really just one over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Um, and that is going to be in the positive x direction, or positive y direction. Um, so we have y hat, and this distance here we said is s. So we have s squared. So pretty simple, nothing to it. Um, e02 the electric field on zero from two is equal to Q over four pi epsilon naught. Um, here we have zero, so we just have one in the denominator. So the numerator is all we have, one minus V squared over C squared. Um, and that is in the negative direction, in negative Y hat direction and we have d minus s squared as our distance. So all the way up here and then back down, um, back down so we're at s. All right, so we have those two things, so we balance them. That just means that we add them up and they equal zero. So we have e01 plus e02 is equal to q over 4 pi epsilon naught. That's common, right? So then we have 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared uh, minus 1 minus v squared over, well, actually, don't quite have it that simple. What, times 1 over s squared minus um, 1 minus v squared over c squared over d minus s squared. I uh, almost had it really easy, but I, I was kidding myself. And that all equals zero. And because this thing's just a constant factor, this whole thing is equal to zero, or this is equal to that, right? So I'm just going to assume this is equal to that. I'll cross multiply and get everything in the numerator. You know how it is. I always want everything in the numerator. Um, that means I'll have d minus s squared, which in reality is equal to d squared plus s squared minus 2ds. 
is equal to 1 minus v squared over c squared to the 3 halves, 1 minus v squared over c squared to the 3 halves times s squared. Okay, and yeah, this is something we can solve with a quadratic equation. Um, so what we have is 1 minus 1 minus v squared over c squared to the 3 halves times s squared minus 2ds uh, plus d squared is equal to 0. Um, and now we just have our quadratic equation. Uh, the way I like to do this is I take 2a and multiply it by s. 2, 1 minus 1 over v squared over c squared to the 3 halves times s is equal to a minus b. So we have 2d plus or minus the square root of um, b squared. So that's 4d squared minus 4 times um, a and c. That's c, so we've got a d squared there. That's a nice common factor that's going to come out. We have 1 minus 1 minus v squared over c squared to the 3 halves in our square root sum, right? I've got to move this up because the math waits for no man, right? Um, and so we have 2d that we can bring out because the 4d squared, when we bring that out, is 2d and we can bring that out there. So we have 1 plus or minus square root of 1 minus 1 plus uh, 1 minus v squared over c squared to the 3 halves. Uh, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? <laughs> that, is, uh, that is so rad. So these guys cancel, and we just have um, all this stuff is equal to 2d times um, the... 1 minus v squared, or we have 1 plus or minus 1 minus v squared over c squared to the 3 quarters, okay? Um, so that's, can I, yeah, okay. So that's our, um, That's our solution there. We just have to bring our s over, cancel out these twos, um, and we have one plus or minus um, one minus v squared over c squared to the three halves over one minus one minus v squared over c squared. Or oh, no. this one's a three quarters. Good, good, good. Three quarters, and this one's the three halves, and D. Okay, but we can go farther, right? Do you see how we can go farther? I'll give you 30 seconds. I'm lying. I'll, if you want 30 seconds, press pause. Um, this guy here is just 1 minus 1 minus v squared over c squared to the 3 quarter times 1 plus 1 minus v squared over c squared to the 3 quarter. Um, so we have 1 plus or minus... 1 minus v squared over c squared to the 3 quarters over 1 minus 1 minus v squared over c squared to the 3 quarters times 1 plus 1 minus v squared over c squared to the 3 quarters. All right? And that means that one of these cancels and the other one survives, right? So that, um, that's perfectly fine. We still haven't gotten rid of our ambiguity with those plus, that plus and minus sign. Uh, but it looks like we've got a really, really cool and simple answer, which we love cool, simple answers, right? So we have 1 plus or minus 1 minus v squared over c squared to the 3 quarters. Um, maybe it's minus or plus. Eh, same difference, right? So... We're at a pretty nice point here. We just have to decide what's the right, um, what is the right sign. Um, well, I think the best thing to do is to look at the limit, 
in the limit where the v is equal to zero these these two other charges have um, the same charge so uh, the third charge has to be right in the middle that means s has to be equal to d over two that means we have to choose the sign that when we take v is equal to zero gives us two in the bottom and that's plus minus actually gives us infinity on the bottom and we don't like that right um, but uh, minus would say that um, the uh, that the charge would come all the way down to the other one of the other charges which is exactly the opposite of what we want so um, so we know that s is equal to d over one plus or minus or one plus excuse me just went through all that just to forget it one plus one minus v squared over c squared to the three quarters okay and that's what we're looking for all right so it's good we use a little bit of physical reasoning to get that and uh, the one last thing that we might want to do is we might want to figure out exactly where s is so depending on what v is where is s but well, we said that at s, v equals v equals zero s is d over two right and we know that when v is equal to c right then um this guy is a lot stronger than that guy so he's going to get pushed up all the way over here right um so in that case v equals c we have um d right so over here we have D, and then we have um, some sort of something in the denominator that isn't changing very much at first, and it looks sort of like that, right? So, uh, and that's that's pretty much all we're um, looking for in this particular problem. Um, I think it's pretty nice. I think it shows you exactly what's going on with these um, fields. Um, at least it shows you as much as you want, as you're going to get um, on uh, by looking at a piece of paper, right? Um, anyways, I th I think this will help you a lot, a lot on those two um, questions on the homework. So, uh, you know, I'll see you in class.